Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ryan Swain, and I'm going to talk about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. Okay, sages and saints and people in all different cultures all over the world have been trying to describe this for thousands and thousands of years. And so what I'm going to do in about seven videos, seven messages, is talk about the phases of awakening, what it means, what the different processes are, what changes in our lives. And what this is, is it's a process of going from a, a state of being asleep, which means just running the societal and family programs that have been kind of built into us through our upbringing, innocently, <laughs> through our childhood upbringing, okay, the things that we should be, the things that we should do, what needs to happen, you know, what might happen if we don't do things the right way. And most of that is what mom and dad or the caregivers around us what their fears were, what their beliefs were, really just become a part of our own psyche. And we're running on that program, okay? And what happens is that that program doesn't work for us for very long. It might work, you know, we had a, even had a really good upbringing, okay? And, and, and experienced a lot of joy and happiness. But as the years go on, particularly in the late teen years and into the 20s, especially in the early 30s for most people, it's when things start to break down, relationships aren't working, okay? When life circumstances are just starting to dictate a lack of peace, feeling stressed out, feeling really um, under pressure, like life is getting away from you. <laughs> like life is running you instead of you having the reins of your life. And so awakening is all about birthing out of that. And I'm going to describe the seven phases of awakening and my goal is to put this on a silver platter because I've gone through my own awakening process here into enlightenment. And I can share with you that it is the most amazing, beautiful, heart-opening experience. Because really what this is, it's the path of walking from the head to the heart, becoming your full, authentic, true self that you were intended to be. And your life purpose births out of that as you come into your fullness, into your wholeness. You can call it spiritual if you want to. It doesn't really matter, okay? All the concepts that I'm going to talk about are backed up by science, okay? But they also have kind of a spiritual component too because ultimately what this whole thing is based on it is a knowing, a knowing that each person has inner wisdom, okay? That's what intuition means, inner wisdom. And so this process is about stopping the old ways of seeking approval and validation outside of yourself, and turning your attention inward, okay, into your heart and allowing what's right for you, what's true for you, what's real for you to come up and out. And it literally changes everything as we make that shift, okay? And it is the process of awakening into enlightenment, okay? And enlightenment, what does that mean, okay? Well, as you start to become more and more of your authentic self, as opposed to the society conditioned false self that most people are living under okay everybody starts out that way okay but as you come into your wholeness and your fullness enlightenment is a place where your heart opens to the point and you've cleared out all of the wounds from your upbringing okay all the little traumas and big traumas that have kind of sequestered and split off parts of your real self that have limited your full expression that have kept your emotions stagnant and numb Okay, enlightenment is when all of it is free flowing and your heart is open and you see everyone around you as good. Okay, and you know because it happens within yourself, you start to have the self love that just grows up more and more and more, stronger and stronger and stronger and clearer and clearer. Okay, and as that happens within yourself, it starts to be how you see the world around you. You see everybody as good. You might not like everything that everyone does, and you know, of course, a part of this that we'll talk about is about knowing your own boundaries, what works for you, what doesn't, and taking care of your own space, your own experience. But as your heart opens more and more, you see the people that you're navigating conflict with as perfectly innocent, okay? And so when you see people as innocent, see people as good, and you know that there's this shared light between you, that's when your world changes, and that's enlightenment, okay? So we'll get into this, the seven phases of enlightenment. I hope you enjoy, and my goal is that it's simple and that it's clear and that you can implement this in your life right away.
All right, thanks for joining me here. Again, we're talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. <laughs> so phase one, this is the unconscious phase that the large majority of the world is in. Okay, and it's being asleep. Phase one is being asleep, being unconscious. Okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> What that means is that you're running on the hamster wheel of life, okay? The beliefs that got ingrained and indoctrinated into you, religious beliefs or, you know, the rules of society, okay? The things that keep you limited and keep you from expressing yourself fully, from saying exactly what you think and what you feel, from speaking your truth, from being yourself. You know, there are all these unconscious societal norms that we just get conditioned, okay, by mom and dad and our families around us, by um, our teachers, okay? They're the things like if you talk too loud, hey, you know, when people get indignant, okay, you can't talk that loud, you need to be quiet, okay? Or, or, or anything that you might do where somebody gets upset, you can't do that. Society kind of has this cap, okay? And if you express above that capped threshold, people start to put pressure on you, okay? So in this asleep phase, for the most part, people, and, and, and most of you who are watching this video, if you're watching, you're probably just stepping out of this and starting to realize, hey, I don't think I want to be asleep. Because in an asleep mode, okay, it's very reactionary, meaning that we're responding or reacting to the world around us and trying to keep others happy. You know, we're trying to run our career and, and, and take care of our families and do the best that we can do. But when we're in this unconscious mode, which I remember very clearly, okay, at the end of the day, if other people don't approve of us, we tend to adapt. We tend to conform because we are running on this mental program that is just a part of our society and it's all innocent. No one concocted this plan. But the program is, hey, fit in. Go along to get along. Don't make waves. Don't be too big. Don't be too weird. You know, don't dress outside of the norm because then you'll be weird. Don't, you know, talk too differently than the people around you, okay? Now, some people rebel against this, but they're still in an asleep mode, okay? Some people, like there's communities of subcultures and countercultures where people are pointing the finger at mainstream and they're hating it, you know, and thinking that mainstream society is the big bad guy and they're, you know, have all of this kind of hatred towards it, okay? But most of those people are existing in an, in an unconscious mode too because they're so focused when we're asleep. We're so focused on somebody else needing to change in order for us to experience our inner peace, in order for us to be happy. And that's the societal program. That's why there's so many wars. That's why politics is so much about like pointing the finger and trying to change those other people and being indignant that they think and believe the things that they do. So when we're in the asleep phase, you know you're asleep, okay? When you are believing that your happiness lies in something outside of yourself changing, that you can't experience peace until those people change, you know, until your spouse starts to love you the way that you think you need to be loved. And you blame everyone around you, okay? And then sometimes in that mode too, we also have voices and, um, you know, thoughts that are kind of programmed into us where we blame ourselves at times too. And we think, oh, I'm no good. We don't know our own worth. We don't know our own value. We don't know our own goodness. And so the main signs of being asleep are you're not, you don't think that you're looking for anything. I remember this, in, 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 for me, you know, it takes until phase two, which I'll talk about here in a few minutes, when you start to realize that, hey, life isn't working the way that you want it to. So people who are asleep, they're just going through the motions, living life. You know, they, they might even think that they're happy, okay, but they're not tuned into their emotions at all. They're not tuned into their feelings. They're not really being honest with their life experience and say, hey, if I'm honest, I would not be spending my time and attention the way that I am. I would not be working 60 hours a week like I am. I would not be dating this particular person. But my life is running me and it leads to stress, conflict, and eventually burnout. Okay? And so phase one, asleep, burning out. Life is running you. <laughs> and you're not feeling free. And you don't even know it yet because you're just functioning unconsciously. And there's nothing wrong with it. But if you want deep peace and inner joy and happiness that births out in becoming your full and authentic self, there's a need to realize it's time for a change. So that's phase one.
All right, thanks for joining me back here. This is Dr. Swain here talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. What are they? So phase two is such a great phase because this is the beginning. I almost think of it as like when light starts entering a person and they start to see things in a different way. Okay, phase two is when someone starts to realize, hey, maybe I don't know as much as I think I know. Maybe the ways that my family, you know, that I grew up thinking that I had things figured out or my religion, which was big for me. I grew up in Christianity, thought I had it all figured out, <laughs> thought I knew what God was, thought I knew what the rules were, thought it seemed pretty easy, thought I was happy. Okay. But then as life circumstances start to become more and more conflictual, maybe, you know, there can be different, um, you know, traumas that happen in life or circumstances that bring a lot of discomfort and it starts to force the mind to look at things and force you to look at things and, hey, you know, things aren't working for me the way that I want them to. My life isn't going exactly as the way I thought it would. You know, I thought I had things planned out. I thought this marriage was just going to, we were going to get married and things were going to be great and now there's a lot of conflict. Or, you know, maybe there's a loss of a loved one which forces you know, deep-seated feelings to start to come up, which then the mind starts to realize, hey, you know, there are things that I haven't considered. There are things that I haven't looked at. And for me, I remember being in this Christian world where I thought I had it all figured out, surrounded by people who, you know, had pretty much 0% opening for their belief system to be wrong. And I was one of them, but then it started to change. Okay, and it just started to kind of slowly creep up as I was searching and seeking for truth. Okay, and if you're a truth seeker, the truth will surface. And as you seek, you know, even if you're mired in a really thick religious or cultural belief system, okay, if, if there's a seeking for truth that's happening in your life, and if you're watching this video, <laughs> I can tell that it's here because you wouldn't be here with me if you weren't a truth seeker. So what starts to happen is that the ways that we have been living, the beliefs that have been ingrained into us, that we've held onto so tight, there's just a realization. Hey, some of these things maybe aren't as certain as I thought that they were. And new ideas start to come in. There's a little bit of an opening, okay, for new ideas. Just kind of looking around, you know, maybe hearing people talk on the airplane or, or you know, looking at a article in a magazine and starting to just see it in a little bit of a different way. So this is the very beginning of there's just starts to be this little bit of like waking up. And what it is is the belief system that's been intact is just starting to show the first signs of, hey, you know what? There's starting to be this little bit of a knowing that starts to creep up that maybe I need to look at things in a new way. Maybe I don't have all my stuff together. Maybe, I, maybe other people aren't the problem. Maybe I don't have everything figured out. And it's great because in that, it's like what happens is skepticism, pointing the finger, seeing other people as the bad guys, the people who need to change, you know, going from that place of like, life is is easy. Or, you know, I have it figured out. And if other people could just see what I see, then all would be fine. That starts to soften. And softening is always, always, always a place where things can start to come out in a new way, where new ideas can come in, or new beliefs, where being open to the opinions, the thoughts, the perspectives of other people starts to become more and more dominant, more and more prevalent. Start to hear other people talk and think, you know, maybe I can consider that. And it just happens. We can't force it. Okay, but it just starts to take us over. This little bit of skept the skepticism that we had before or the cynicism starts to just softly transition to curiosity. And it goes from this closed state to just a little bit of breath of opening. And that's phase two. Phase two is just starting to soften or what I call a mental opening. You know, the mind is starting to just loosen its hold a little bit. So phase two is the mental opening where light starts to get into the program and things just start to change and start to shift and things are about to get really exciting and interesting. So that's phase two, the mental opening. All right, Dr. Swain here. We're talking about the seven phases of awakening 
into enlightenment. <laughs> what are they? What happens? What changes happen to a human being as we go from being asleep and running the programs of society that they've conditioned, you know, they have been conditioned into us, okay, kind of running on the hamster wheel of life, chasing the future, but not experiencing deep inner peace and able to be present right here in the moment. Okay, that's what we're talking about. So phase three is so great. And phase three is more of a moment than it is a phase because it's it's a big it's the biggest turning point, okay, in a person's life. And this is the awakening moment. So phase one, if you'll remember, was running unconsciously, just running on the hamster wheel of life, the mind kind of having these beliefs, running on the societal norms, not being authentic, not being free, not following intuition. Okay, then phase two was the mental opening when life circumstances and conflict and different things happening in a person's life start to cause the mind to think, you know, maybe I don't have everything, have everything figured out. And it causes a little bit of an opening, a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of looking around and kind of saying, you know what, maybe I need to, to reevaluate. And so what happens is generally people have a moment. And I know for me, it was in November of 2011, okay, when a, a big belief shift happens. This is what I call the awakening moment. And it's kind of, a, it usually happens at a rock bottom moment, okay, where someone gets to a point and it just happens. You can't force it. You can't force the shift. It happens when it happens, okay? And it happens when someone gets to a point where the mind essentially realizes, hey, the beliefs that I've held are just not working, okay? All the striving, all the trying, all of the stress, all of the running, 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 trying to please everyone, trying to be everything for everyone, trying to avoid conflict, trying, trying to be a good boy, trying to be a good girl, okay? And, and that has gotten conditioned into us from when we were little because mom and dad or whoever our caregivers were, they always at the end of the day kind of were in charge. And so in order to keep connection with them, we had to try to adapt and try to conform. And ultimately we had to kind of do what they wanted us to do or behave in ways that they wanted us to. And of course they did with their parents and caregivers as well. There's no bad guy. There's nobody who needs to be blamed. There's nobody who's crafting this master plan to put all of humanity asleep. But this is the human condition. Okay? And all the religions in, in all the world speak to it, kind of speak to some core problem that mankind has. You know, Christianity calls it sin. It's also called you know, the Maya or the fog that humanity lives in. And this is it. Everybody grows up and is conditioned to be asleep running the programs that society um, is running. And this whole awakening process is birthing out of that. And what happens in this awakening moment is there's a realization that, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm not getting what I need. Life isn't what I want it to be. And I've been trying to please everyone and do the right thing and be good. And so it's this turn, this awakening moment is a shift where the mind realizes I can't find outside of myself what I'm looking for. And so then there's this, this shift that goes inward to, that says, hey, I, I realize if I live freely and I start to take steps to find my authentic self and drop the phoniness and drop all the rules and stop trying to please and take care of everyone around me and to, to trust that as I live authentically, feel my feelings, get in tune with my emotions, get in tune with who I am and allow that to birth out. You know, it might not be in these particular words, but there's just a knowing that says, hey, I've tried everything, pleasing everything out there, following the rules. Now I'm going to start taking care of myself because no one else is here to take care of me for me. No one else can. No one else knows the things that I know about myself. No one else can feel my way through life for me. And so it's this awakening moment when that shift happens, boom, and that's when the awakening journey really kicks off. And when someone puts value and stock in, hey, I'm at my best place when I'm living freely and when I'm learning to be my full and authentic self because I believe that I will find my best self, my fullest self as I live more and more freely. So that's phase three, the moment. <music> Thank you.
All right, Dr. Swain here. We're talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment, coming into your full, authentic self, living freely, not conditioned by the world any longer, Okay, not living for anyone else, but realizing the full compassion that's in your heart, the full power that is within you by allowing your intuition to guide you to your life's purpose and to the fullness of who you are. Throwing away the rules and the expectations of other people and learning to open your heart. Bringing the unconscious into the conscious as you walk this path. And it happens naturally once you flip that switch. And we had just talked in the last segment about phase three, which is the awakening moment. When someone starts to realize, and you can't force it, it happens when it happens, that, hey, I'm going to start living from the inside out and I'm going to start I'm feeling myself start to transform. I'm seeing things in new ways. I'm realizing that all the beliefs that I had uh, are not maybe as true as I thought that they were. And I'm going to start going inside myself, in my heart, in my intuition and letting that guide me and trusting that that will take me to the best place for me and the people around me. And that as my heart grows and as I live more freely and fully, that I will become more alive. My emotions will be flowing more freely. My kindness, my compassion, my power will just become more and more and more. And that's just exactly what happens as we walk this path. Okay, so phase four is what I call early awakening. So that awakening moment has happened and now the world is really like a new place. It's like, hey, I'm no longer going to follow other people's advice or always look to other people for validation. I'm going to start to find my inner validation for who I am. And so this is an exciting period and it can start out with a lot of freedom because this shift that has happened brings with it like this knowing that there's so much hope in the future. It's like, oh, you know, life was starting to really become stagnant and weigh on me and just didn't seem like things were getting better. And I was looking at all my years in the past as the best years of my life. You know, the best was behind me. Things were getting harder and harder. Relationships were getting harder and harder. Okay. But once the awakening moment happens and then into this fourth phase, okay, there's this, I, there's this knowing like, oh, I'm going to find freedom. I am going to discover and become my full self that I was born to be, that I was meant to be, that is seated within me. Really, this whole process is, it's like a seed starting to grow and take shape. Okay, as long as we're asleep, that seed isn't getting the sunlight and the water that it needs. It's not getting the love and attention from ourselves, from us, that it needs. But once we start to wake up, it starts to grow, okay? So at the beginning of this phase four, it can, it can be accompanied by a lot of excitement, a lot of hope for the future, and that kind of provides the fuel for this to go. Okay, but then what starts to happen is this can be a challenging phase because as people start to make their first steps, speaking their truth maybe for the first time around family and friends, okay, not going to things that they would have been felt obligated to go to before, no longer playing by the rules. And as we start to do that, people turn and look at us like, what's that? You know, they feel that people around us feel the change. They feel the difference. They feel the change in the energy and the behavior. So oftentimes I use a... Um, analogy of like we're like a flower that's in a flower bed okay and as we're wanting to bloom into our fullness it's almost like we're like uprooting ourselves a little bit and the flowers around us that we're sharing nutrients with that we're sharing soil with our friends and our family our co-workers as we start to make changes in how we behave because we're starting to live from a place of freedom allowing our hearts to lead us forward okay in christianity that's called the holy spirit you know, when I, but you know, in, in mainstream Christianity, what I was in, it was always looking outside ourselves. What is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit, um, from my perspective, is, is that that knowing, that intuition, inner wisdom, that when we know what feels right for us, when we're going to make a decision. And in this phase four, we start to learn how to make decisions from trusting our intuition and following that. And so it's just the beginning of starting to trust intuition, starting to behave in different ways, starting to tune into freedom, starting to experience some conflict with friends and family because it's bound to happen. And that conflict is actually what's going to take us home. That conflict is what's actually going to bring the unconscious within us, the unhealed parts within us up to the surface to be received, to be loved, to be accepted. And that's when the heart opens and the awakening process happens more and more and more. So phase four, early awakening. It's an exciting time. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, Dr. Swain here, and I'm talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. All right, so seven phases. And generally, you know, this process can take a very different amount of time for different people, okay? But generally, from about three to about eight years, it can take depending on a particular person's mode. And there's no right, there's no wrong, there's no rush. Okay, as this process unfolds, it takes its own form. Okay, it's different for everybody, but what I'm describing are the seven phases that people go through in general as they go from being asleep, being unconscious, okay, running the, the old programs to the point where they're living freely, living authentically, following intuition, and only really knowing intuition in each moment, doing exactly what feels right, okay? with a heart open and seeing the world and yourself as just brilliantly beautiful and full of light, full of life and deserving of the highest forms of love. Okay. So phase five here was what I call mid awakening. And this is generally the longest phase of all of these phases. Okay. We just talked about phase four, which is early awakening. And that is when someone's first starting to take steps to live authentically and authentically means being true to what you think and what you feel as much as you are able to in each moment, okay? Standing up for yourself, taking care of yourself, okay? Learning to navigate your boundaries, okay? Boundaries, it's a huge part of awakening and it happens naturally as you open up your heart more and more, get tuned into your feelings because feelings are the guide, okay? Emotions, you know, emotions means energy in motion and that's where emotions should be they should be flowing and moving but as we come from a place of being asleep we've been conditioned to suppress and repress our emotions to repress our energy to not express ourselves fully to not be free to not be alive to not be vibrant okay so in phase five this is when people are taking more and more um, steps to take care of themselves and to learn how to navigate their boundaries a boundary is in each moment taking care of yourself, you know, be, being tuned into your body and responding to conflict situations, whether it's little conflict, you know, just like someone's talking to you for um, too long and you realize you don't want to listen anymore, you know, you have choices. You stay in it, well, you're going to feel repressed, you're going to feel um, resentment build. You know, anytime that you go past your limits with, with how much time you give somebody, how much attention you give or whatever it is that you're doing, you know, your body, yourself, is yours to take care of. And so in phase five, it's about feeling the feelings, bringing the attention more and more into the body. And that's really the biggest part. So kind of the main thing within this whole awakening process is we've been conditioned in the asleep mode that we started out in to be essentially numb. We don't bring our attention into our uncomfortable feelings that have been repressed in our bodies through our childhood. And so this process is like bringing the attention more and more into the body, letting the body speak and dictate. That's where this inner wisdom, intuition comes from. It comes from the body, okay? We've literally got areas of dense energy that have been bound up in our bodies because during our childhood, when we weren't allowed to express ourselves fully and freely, things got held. You know, anytime energy came up in the body, you know, when we're kids, we tantrum and we release it. But as we get older, that becomes less and less acceptable to the people around us. So we hold things in our body. We hold energy, we store it, we block it, you know, traumas, if we haven't grieved them, if we haven't moved that energy and really freed up our system, it gets bound up. And so phase five is tuning more and more and more into the energy in our bodies and really being able to be comfortable, being present with the uncomfortable energy that comes up when we get triggered. When we get emotionally triggered, when we're in any bit of conflict and, oh, it gets uncomfortable, being able to bring the attention in and be with that that is what this is all about more and more and more being present with that wounded inner child within us. And that inner child is just the parts of us that haven't been seen, haven't been loved, haven't known love, haven't known acceptance. And so it's our job and it happens during this awakening process to be the loving attention that those parts never got. And then the heart opens more and more, the energy starts to flow, the emotions start to flow, we're waking up, we're waking up, we're starting to feel good, we're experiencing conflict, life is changing a lot, but we know we're on our path to freedom and to fullness. And that's phase five, mid-awakening. All right.
All right. Hello, everyone. Dr. Swain back here. We are talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. We're talking about phase six, which is what I call late awakening. Okay, this is the late phase, okay, before enlightenment. <laughs> oh, it's such a great time. This is when life really starts to change. Okay, and this can last for a while. So we just talked about uh, phase five, which is the mid-awakening phase. And I talked about how that is when people are starting to become more of their full authentic self, become more aware of the stored energies in the body, become more in tune to when conflict enters any situation and utilizing that conflict to go inward we go inward and to get insights okay we go inward and we feel 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 our feelings and out of that and learning to spend time in silence okay that's when insights birth out that's when new directions birth out that's when new knowings start to come in and things start to feel like a, a jigsaw puzzle coming together okay and, and life starts to make more and more sense Okay, your capacity is just expanded greatly because so much of the emotional debris that was inside you and clouding your mind, all the rules and all the stuff that was programmed into you, it's getting dissipated. Okay, so through these phases five, mid awakening, and the phase that I'm talking about now, late awakening, which is a kind of a continuation of phase five, but it's just as things become a little bit more sophisticated, okay? In this phase six, you'll know you're in phase six, and it's usually about two or three or four years into the process of awakening, and it's different for everyone. I just share that to kind of give a rough reference point so that you have some kind of an idea of, of what the timing of this can be. But in phase six, there's more sophistication, okay? There's a knowing uh, very tuned into when conflict enters any any situation, any little conflict. You know, somebody bumps you at the grocery store or big conflicts. Okay, the heart is expanding, the heart is opening, and there is awareness. Okay, there is awareness when conflict comes, and when conflict comes, there's a it it starts to become routine. And in phase six, it's just part of your life, part of who you are to bring the attention into the body, feel those uncomfortable feelings that come up when there's conflict, rather than reacting and doing the same stuff over again, reacting. This is about always responding, tuning into the body, feeling those feelings. That's what transmutes that repressed dark energy into light and the heart opens as that happens. So this is all about feeling, feeling, feeling. And by phase six, you are a feeler. You feel everything and you use it and you move and you're starting to, you know, dress differently. You're starting to speak or you're not starting to. You have been, okay? Phase five, these changes start to happen. Phase six, this is when your life really starts to look different. You, your body starts to look different. You're, you're, you're so tuned into your body. It's taking care of itself. You allow it the freedom because you have, you've, you've taken care of yourself. You've learned how to, to mind your boundaries and to keep other people's expectations from controlling you, to keep those old thoughts from controlling you. You're living more and more freely. You're more and more comfortable being yourself, speaking your truth, okay? And doing it from any place in terms of dynamic of emotion, okay? Expressing anger when anger's appropriate. But also there's this tenderness that comes up more and more. Just this presence, this ability to connect with yourself and others. And that comes more and more as you're able to bring that attention in and be with those uncomfortable feelings as you get triggered in conflict. Okay, so that's really what this whole thing, this whole process of awakening into enlightenment, it's taking the unconscious and is bringing it into the conscious by feeling it rather than doing the old patterns when we're asleep where the mind tries to fix things outside of ourselves, tries to change, tries to blame and shame everybody out there so that we can feel okay. Well, this is realizing, hey, if I'm going to be at peace, I'm going to have to find it within myself. So phase six is it's happening. It's happening. You know you're on your path. You know you're right where you need to be. And things can get crazy. Lots of conflict. Huge life changes because you have to let go of control. As you birth this out, your authentic self, and you let go of the reins and you trust the universe to guide you, you trust your heart to guide you, you can have huge sweeping life changes, end of relationships that you never thought would end, and they won't end permanently for the most part, but huge changes to who you're spending time with, how you're spending your time. Silence becomes your best friend because wisdom is birthed out of silence. Wisdom is birthed out of spending time in quiet and feeling the feelings. And in phase six, that has become a huge part of who you are. Are and how you spend your time. So phase six, it's getting real. It's getting really, really real. And it is awesome.
<laughs> okay, here we are. Dr. Swain here talking about the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. And here we are, phase seven. We just talked about phase five, which is mid-awakening, and phase six, late awakening. Okay, and during these phases, this is really when our authentic self is birthing out. Who we truly are is starting to be seen in new ways. You know, this love for ourselves just coming up as we realize more and more who we are and we start to see who we are because we've been navigating conflict. We've been dealing with real things. We've been being raw. Okay, we've been having lots of changes in our life. Okay, but who we are, who we truly are, starts to become more and more stable more and more strong, more and more tender. Okay, who we are, it's like a circle that's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the circle of fullness, of integrity. Okay, we just become more and more in integrity, okay, which means being true to ourselves. Okay, above all else, knowing that as we do that, it's just birthing out of us that our love is growing more and more. Our ability to connect with others and to see others and to be compassionate, it just is birthing out. We don't have to try anymore. All the trying from the past, we realized that that wasn't real anyways. All the trying to be nice, trying to be loving, if it's trying, then it's not real. Okay, it's an effort, it's striving. This is reversing that, right? And awakening up, awakening into the fullness of who we are. Okay, and as phase six goes on, and life is changing, the heart is opening more and more because as we are able to be present with the discomfort in our bodies when we experience conflict, that literally opens our hearts. That literally transmutes the dark block repressed energy that's been stored away and tucked away in our bodies. It's releasing it. And so now there's an ability to just be present with everyone around you. Okay, regardless of what they're experiencing, people can get mad. That's towards the end of phase six. You start to know it because people are getting upset with you. People are blaming you for things and you are not feeling triggered. You're not feeling like your heart is closing at all. And that's what enlightenment is. Okay, You might be watching this thing. Who is this guy to talk about enlightenment? Well, I've experienced it myself. Okay, And as this phase six goes on, there is a moment most people experience some type of transcendental experience or situation where they realize that they are free energetically. They are no longer controlled by anything around them, that they have birthed out their full and authentic self. The heart opens to the point where you just know it's never going to close. That you can look at everyone around you and only see beauty and only see light. It doesn't mean that you like everything that they do. It doesn't mean that life is perfect in every way. Okay, but the heart is open and there's a deep knowing that all your dreams are birthing out, all your premonitions, all the things that excite you, they excite you because they are your future. And there's just a resting and relaxing into that. There's no more push. There's no more striving. There's no more tight, bound up heart. The mind has relaxed. There's a trusting that happens. There's this deep peace that surpasses all understanding. And it's what the saints and sages over all the years in the different religious books and wisdom books throughout time have they been talking about, you know, these people who have arrived, who have been on earth, who, have, who obviously there was something special about them, okay? And people saw it, people felt it, people knew it. They start to tell stories about it and that's when religions form, okay? But religion is the mind's effort to try to copy and recreate something that, that was very genuine and real. And that's what enlightenment is. It's when the full authentic self has been birthed and there's just this rest. There's just this peace. There's it's basically the body has become a conduit for consciousness. Okay. And consciousness can just flow and grow and expand. Okay. And it's happening all over the earth, all over the world. More and more people are waking up, waking up and going through these phases. And so I created this little video series here to be a resource and a tool for people who are waking up to understand what's happening, to give some structure and some support around this experience because it is life changing. It is a whole new life, a whole new world that's birthing out of your heart. The heart opens more and more. And let me tell you, it's better than you could ever imagine, but it's also very challenging through the process. So relax, breathe, tune into silence and just know you're right where you need to be. There's no rush, okay? Your journey will happen just as it's meant to. And so with love, I give you the seven phases of awakening into enlightenment. Namaste.